Cool, okay, welcome everyone. So um, yeah, thank you for the kind introduction, Sam. I'm the Chief Information Security uh, Officer here at Revolut, so I look after anything information security related uh, across the organization. I've got some of my team in the room as well. Yurosh, Vladimir, I don't know if he is, Evangelos is waving, so come and talk to us after. Um, we are hiring and I'll cover that later. But uh, in this talk, I just wanna talk to you about um, how you scale security in a big startup because we, we talk often in the industry, uh, particularly from a startup perspective, move fast and break things. And that obviously holds quite true if you're an attacker because it's your job to break things. But really, if you wanna scale security well, it's about making things, it's about making processes, it's about making standards, it's about getting people to build an effective baseline. And that's the kind of thing that I wanna talk about uh, today and talk about how we've done that at Revolut. So check this is on. Yeah. So yeah, that's me. So a little bit about Revolut. I think most people know what Revolut does, what we're trying to do, right? And that is completely disrupt the financial industry. So if you download the app, uh, go through the process, you will have a bank account in two minutes in a variety of uh, currencies. We are trying to put financial literacy back into the hands of people um, where the big banks necessarily haven't given people the granularity and control that they've wanted. So you'll see, you know, we've got just over 5 million customers uh, worldwide at the moment, and we will give you access to just over 120 currencies. So uh, grab a card if you haven't already. There were some on the table. The vending machine's free. Help yourself on the way out. Just grab a card if you'd like one. Uh, and what we're trying to do is give people um, new features that traditional banks haven't offered them. So whether that's sending money worldwide, whether it's being able to use our upcoming uh, products in trading, uh, whether it's being able to send and save via vaults. We've got loads of features built into the app. I'm gonna uh, you know, talk about now, the sales pitch is over, what we're trying to do from a security perspective. So I think it's fairly obvious to say that the financial sector is one of the most targeted sectors when it comes to cybercrime and therefore why it's one of the most important sectors we get things like web application and mobile application security right. And that's where I think OWASP and the OWASP community plays a huge part in helping us do that. And we're really grateful to actually host this event because the collective knowledge in this room is probably, you know, worldwide as a community, one of the most knowledgeable communities when it comes to application and web application, mobile application security. So it's clear to say that I think traditional banks have had a hard time. Um, you know, they're up, with, up against some big challenges, monolithic IT systems, you know, legacy applications, difficult to manage code, and this puts, you know, traditional banks in a difficult position. And they're then competing with organizations like us that were born in the cloud, and on the surface, sound like we're immune to many of these security issues. The fact is, we've still got to play just as hard as keeping our, you know, applications and data safe, because we've got this scale issue to contend with, with the growth challenge that we've got, and the nature of cloud services and the way they operate. So from our side, you know, we're trying to um, give power back to customers. One of the big challenges, I think, with traditional banks is they've placed the burden of security on customers. So if you have a problem with your card, you lose it, what do you have to do? You have to ring the bank up, try and talk to somebody and get the card canceled. So we focus initially, and one of the main reasons why I think it's really important to have a good discussion about security is making sure you build security first into your products and that sets a really interesting culture inside the organization for getting stuff done uh, to do with security. And there's a couple of ways we do this. If you've used the card, you'll probably be familiar with a couple of these different approaches, but once you've got your account set up and you're using the app, there are a bunch of security features which we give you in the power of your hand that traditional institutions haven't. So the first is being able to disable your cards being able to turn off with granular control, things like the mag stripe, contactless, turn on geofencing when it comes to spending. And these are the kind of features that if you get built into the product, set a really good tone for people, particularly in the defense space, in talking to the rest of the organization about security. And that's really my role. I come from a pen testing background, but my job really here is to talk to consumers, talk to the board, talk to other stakeholders about what good security looks like. And I think it's quite easy when you've really thought about that and got it built into the product, and that's why we've focused on giving those security features to users. So that's all well and good. Let me talk about a couple of other features that we've had for a while which uh, have made the security challenge a little bit easier across the rest of the organization. One of the main ones has been disposable virtual card numbers. So if you're a, a premium or metal customer, you have access to virtual disposable card numbers, 
These are one-time use uh, cards. So if you, for instance, want to buy something online with an e-commerce vendor you're not too trustworthy about, you can use that card detail and the second the transaction's processed, it no longer works anymore. So we're trying to give this kind of power to people so that we can have the discussion with the rest of the organization about what security and trust looks like because security has a positive correlation with trust and that's really important from my perspective if you're going to be a financial institution. So that's, that's, I promise, all of the sales pitch done. Now we're going to talk a little bit about how we actually do this. So the first is we are a complete born in the cloud organization. We were in uh, cloud services from day one. Currently, we're using Google Compute Platform. All of the systems that you use if you're a Revolut customer that hold your data, that process your transactions, they're all hosted in GCP. So that gives us some huge advantages when it comes to things like scale. It gives us access to some great tools that uh, you know we've got through the Google, e Google ecosystem. And by using this microservice API-based approach, we don't have many of those issues that traditional finance institutions have had around monolithic security challenges with that type of old school architecture. It obviously comes with some clear benefits around resiliency, but it puts so much power in people's hands. If you're now a developer, you can very quickly scale your application infinitely with a click of a few buttons, which brings some interesting security challenges because how do you control that? You know, how do you make sure that you're not burdening the business, putting friction in the way of people doing their job, but equally make sure that you're allowing the, the organization to grow and scale in the way that it wants? So we get some benefits with Google around things like context-aware access control, and this is quite, I think, a good feature uh, for organizations like ours, where employees have specific access to data based on their user behavior characteristics. You know, the simple things, are you logging on from an application or a, you know, a, an IP address we haven't seen before? Have you moved too quickly based on your, you know, the reasonable travel speed that we'd expect somebody to move? These kinds of factors and why am I talking about this? I'm talking about this because this stuff allows me to have really good conversations with the rest of the board and stakeholders about security. And that's why we've been able to work with security researchers and establish things like a bug bounty program because we've been able to talk about these factors with the board and bring it to life about how we do security. So just touching briefly on culture, I think you know, I could make this, I could have made this presentation a long presentation about some of the tools and systems and processes that we use. But in my mind, there's one thing that strikes at the center of being effective at security, and that's culture. We can give people all of the process, we can give them all of the tools, but fundamentally, if we haven't built that security culture, developers are not going to use SAP. You know, they're not going to use products we give them to test security, they're not going to follow traditional processes. So a big part of the work that I do, and I think that's the power of a community of like OWASP, is building a really strong culture, not just across information security, but inside organizations to get security right. And the way we do that here, for instance, is giving developers access to tools to do their own security testing. Many of these tools are, of course, open source, and we widely use internally things like Zap and other products to test our own security. But we focus on not just giving people rules and rule books, but giving them you know, the expertise to actually test their own application. And that, I think, is a really strong aspect of getting security right. And a lot of people talk about you know, DevSecOps, and it, it has had this kind of phrase of being a bit of a buzzword. But from our perspective, when I hear that phrase, I generally read culture. And I try to think about what we can do from a security culture perspective to get those kinds of uh, you know, capabilities built into the organization, not just uh, some capability the security function has. We do a lot of work on knowledge sharing across the organization, so hackathons internally, knowledge sharing sessions. We did one recently on uh, OWASP Top 10, and we're looking at some interactive training through some of the third-party vendors that are out there to give gamification into the development process and help developers write secure code using some of these uh, training platforms that are recently, reduced, uh, recently uh, released. So a big part of the work, I think, around power of this community and, and what it can do with the rest of the industry is starting to build this culture. And obviously, that works a lot with the tools and open source products that we release and we work on collectively. But I think now's our moment to really start making change in the industry. We're all over the news, you know, the Facebook fine, the Marriott Hotel fine. We, now's our moment, and now's the chance to actually make some change uh, from a security perspective and make it real to people uh, who are maybe not quite as passionate about security as we are. So. You know, this stuff's all good, but still we can't get in the way of a business that's trying to make rapid change. So 
On average, we make hundreds of changes to production a day. Trying to get security into a modern CI CD pipeline is difficult. You cannot inspect everything. Anybody that thinks you can run a DAST tool at runtime for builds happening that frequently uh, is, is onto a loser. There's so, you know, this speed uh, is a m modern factor, you know, a major factor of how modern business operates quickly, particularly if you're a startup. So you have to think about the business objective here, which is we want to make change and we want to make it quickly. So we can't be doing things from a security perspective that we have been doing historically, which is using things like signatures to detect at runtime security vulnerabilities as they're going, and going through into build uh, on production systems. It slows down people doing stuff and it makes the build time uh, too long. So this is why I go back to getting culture right and the technology will follow. If we can get developers talking about security, give them the tools to test their own product, show them what good look, looks like, standardize common libraries and components that they're expected to use, and take away some of that decision-making capability that can sometimes go wrong when we give them you know, unstructured uh, security requirements and move away from this idea of a rule book to actually giving the tools and powers to developers, I think we're into a really good um, position and that's I think where we have the biggest impact with our organizations and getting change done so there's loads of stuff that Revolut's going to be doing soon loads of new products and features that we're going to be releasing and security is always going to be part of that and I'm really glad actually to get some time with all of you tonight and host this event I welcome all of you you know come and talk to me after ask ask me any questions I'm sure we will have some time for questions after but we personally I, I want to build a really strong relationship with the security industry and through things like our bug bounty responsible disclosure program. I'm really uh, proud to get the time to talk to you uh, today about that. And I'm sure I'm looking forward to talking to many of the other um, speakers. We're also hiring, um, of course. So if you are interested uh, in a job, come and talk to me, Evangelos, or Yorosh after. Um, and thank you for your time. Thanks very much, Paul. So. Uh,